Hello and welcome to a special conversation that we're having with TCS today. The company has launched an assessment and migration factory for AWS mainframe modernization platform. Well, that sounds like a lot of technical jargon for you and me, but let's find out and simplify what this development actually means. We're now joined by Mr. Krishna Mohan, the global head of the AWS business unit for TCS. Uh, Krishna, it's a pleasure speaking with you. I'm Bhima Tendulkar from CNBC TV 18. First, I want you to explain what exactly is the platform that you've launched. Hi, Rima. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, we coming to the platform that we have actually, uh, you know, launched. Uh, I'm uh, basically talking from uh, in, from Las Vegas, uh, where I'm with uh, AWS and leadership on AWS reInvent, the annual event. Uh, first, very glad to be here. Uh, after 20 months, we're meeting in person. So around 25,000 uh, people are attending in person. So uh, with all the precautions that we're taking, uh, pretty happy uh, to be here. The first two days are over, uh, remaining two days to go. Uh, I'm very glad to actually share that uh, we have been the launch partner for AWS uh, mainframe modernization. Uh, which was launched by the CEO Adam today in the keynote. Uh, the platform that we're actually talking about is, uh, you know, all the enterprises, um, if they had to look at the enterprise transformation and cloud transformation, uh, they had to definitely handle the legacy uh, systems and legacy modernization. So mainframe is part of that legacy modernization. Um, you know, it's a very core component of the legacy systems across all the industries. So we have set up a factory, uh, an accelerated, uh, an automated factory uh, to drive the legacy modernization, looking at the old code and converting it into a, a cloud native uh, you know, form. Uh, so that's the platform that we have actually uh, set up using TCS, uh, you know, Mastercraft, our own tools that we have. And of course, partnering with uh, AWS on their new tools that we have actually, uh, they've announced. So we have been working with AWS for last two quarters for this announcement to be part of the uh, launch partner. So it's the factory in looking at uh, assessing the legacy uh, workloads uh, coming out with a roadmap blueprint of modernization and leveraging automation uh, and you know capturing the entire uh, you know delivery wisdom into capsules uh, into platforms into the tools and executing the legacy modernization to go to a cloud native uh, you know workloads and that's that's basically uh, what the factory delivers to the customers it actually significantly reduces the time to value for the customers. We're talking about almost two third time reduction in the legacy modernization on mainframe, uh, and which is done with a very uh, secured and automated way. Uh, so we're, we're really excited uh, with this new capability that uh, along we got along with the AWS. Uh, we are definitely looking forward to driving this uh, transformation for all majority of our enterprise customers. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong in just understanding what this development is. So you're basically going to migrate uh, the on-prem legacy mainframe systems, both the hardware as well as the software. So the software will now be a cloud native applications, right? Is that the yeah. understanding? It's going to be a migration of both the hardware and the software? You're right. Uh, migration and uh, key component is actually modernization. Okay. Uh, so we are taking, uh, you know, uh, you know, decade old uh, application logic and the software, uh, and of course the hardware, and moving to completely at a both hardware and uh, software layer into the cloud native. So migration and modernization. Okay, so migration of the hardware, and when you say modernization, you're basically saying that the software, which is written for the mainframe system, will now be modernized to a cloud-native software, right? And applications? That, that is right. That is right. Okay. Why do you use the word factory? 
Uh, the factory is, uh, because if you look at mainframe, there are very few industries which are heavy on mainframe. Um, uh, financial services industry, big on mainframe. Um, you know, you have CPG customers, bit of telecom sector. Uh, so these are the sectors which are heavy, use heavily mainframe for their core business loads, business workloads. So we have actually built uh, pre-packaged uh, solutions and accelerators specific to each of these industry uh, to drive this modernization and migration at a much uh, faster pace. So using automations, using uh, tools, using the, uh, uh, the, the entire blueprints of the industry specific to the industries. And that's why it's actually called a factory because we, with a you know, few decades of mainframe experience with TCS, we have captured all of the delivery wisdom and converted them into tools and platforms. So you're targeting uh, BFSI, retail, as well as the CPG verticals, right? With this, the AWS, huh? Telecom, telecom and as well. Telecom. Okay, and telecom, uh, these four key uh, verticals. Um, now, AWS, as we know, um, is a very big player in the cloud market. Uh, plus, um, you know, you know, not enough has been said about TCS and the kind of work that you're doing across uh, enterprises. So can you tell us, um, you know, perhaps if you could help us with some numbers to understand what percentage of enterprises you will be able to, um, you know, uh, reach out to with uh, this particular development, what it could mean in terms of revenues that you're targeting from this uh, business unit? Yeah, it's a huge, uh, you know, definitely potential perspective because if you take uh, BFSI, uh, uh, telecom, TTH, and life sciences and healthcare and CPG, uh, it's it's almost, uh, you know, 70, 80 percent of TCS, uh, what the revenue and therefore the market is. So it's a huge potential. Uh, we are super excited about that opportunity there. And I think one of the key thing that we had to look at is, uh, it used to be initially a few years back, it is about cloud migration, cloud modernization. Uh, but in last two, three years, if you look at it, it has actually shifted from cloud migration, modernization, cloud native development to actually enterprise transformation. That happened to actually be on the cloud, but it is an enterprise end-to-end transformation, both on IT as well as business, uh, that's happening on cloud. Uh, so the potential is uh, humongous. Uh, we are super excited and that's the very reason uh, TCS a uh, few quarters back actually formed these units, AWS business unit, uh, which is a, a full stack unit, multidisciplinary unit, uh, basically providing uh, all the solutions and services around cloud migration, application, and data, and specifically industry innovation uh, and happening on the, on the cloud. So that's uh, potentially is humongous across the geographies, across the uh, verticals. Uh, we see it's just the start, uh, and we're super excited about this journey. I agree, early days, it's just been a couple of quarters since you set up this business unit, but what would be the current uh, revenue run rate? Uh, as you know, Rima, we, we don't necessarily, uh, TCS, uh, sticking to the TCS standards, not, doesn't necess we do not necessarily give you the details of the revenue, but let me actually give you some uh, data points to see how in the last three quarters we have actually done. We have uh, doubled the revenue in the last three quarters. Uh, we have uh, you know increased the pipeline six times. Uh, so, and significantly increased our talent transformation. So it's a huge opportunity, uh, you know, in three quarters, what we could do, and we are super excited about what we can actually, what's the opportunity that's ahead of us. Uh, with all the new uh, bells and whistles that uh, AWS has announced in last two days, uh, there is a lot more to do. Absolutely, since you are at Las Vegas at the reInvent, uh, you know, summit, of uh, AWS, uh, you've already doubled your revenues in the last three quarters. You're not giving us an approximate size of uh, what of revenues for the current business for this business unit. But if you could tell us how big can it be? What are their big plans? 
Uh, it's actually, uh, I would actually look at it from the uh, big plans perspective. Uh, the overall cloud uh, can be looked at transformation, enterprise transformation on cloud can be categorized into three, uh, cloud for IT, cloud for business, and cloud for innovation. Now, cloud for IT is going on. Uh, that's a volume business. Uh, that's absolutely there. Uh, applications, infra modernization, data modernization, that's actually happening. Legacy systems modernization is happening. Uh, but the real value uh, where we are uh, very excited and where our investments are on uh, cloud for business and cloud for innovation. Uh, cloud for business, a lot of the business units, the LOBs, lines of business of our customers, are really driving business model innovation on cloud. Uh, there, it is all about growth and transformation, GNT story. Uh, it's about new business models, new revenue models, new commercial uh, pricing models rolling out. Sorry to interrupt, but can you give us an example of um, any of your clients um, in the last three quarters and the kind of work that you've done, the growth and transformation work? Yeah, let, let me take actually uh, examples, a couple of examples that came out in reInvent keynotes. Uh, both the customers are TCS, so we are pretty happy about it, uh, the keynote customers. One is Western Union. Uh, Western Union, uh, as, as you know, it is actually a money transfer uh, payment company, and they have completely transformed this business model, moving into 100% onto cloud-native development and new platforms, uh, looking at complete money transfer, their business model is mainly 70% uh, of the uh, business happens through, uh, you know, the POS based money transfers. Now they actually want to, they have a target of moving that 70% business to completely into digital uh, money transfer and the payment systems. So there we have done uh, legacy modernization Recently, they're actually looking at completely coming with the Western Union Bank as the new business model. So this is one, one such customer, uh, you know, I can talk about. The other customer, um, you know, in fact, their CDO today uh, was part of uh, Keynote with Adam, uh, the CEO of AWS, is about United Airlines. So how United Airlines recovered, you know, TTH industry is going, airline industry is going through really tough times, uh, has gone through rather is, uh, in the recovery phase, but how they have transformed their entire COVID testing and COVID readiness uh, for the, uh, you know, airline, uh, you know, using that entire new business model, uh, making it seamless travel for the people uh, in the airline. But more importantly, now they are focusing on how to apply uh, AAML uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to look at running their core uh, airport operations, uh, you know, on cloud, leveraging the cloud technologies. So these opportunities are growth and transformation. These budgets come from the business and, uh, you know, there's a significant opportunity there. Oh. Uh, just one more question, uh, you know, Krishna. Um, you also work with other hyperscalers, right? Google, Microsoft. So how different is the work that you're doing with AWS for your enterprises versus what the other offerings are? Yeah. See, broadly cloud transformation and the enterprise transformation in cloud is, is similar. Um, the differences is the capabilities uh, of each of the hyperscaler, uh, whether it's in AWS or Azure or uh, GCP. Uh, I can talk to uh, you know AWS. The pace of innovation. They have been the leaders of cloud for uh, you know for, for long, and they continue to be. And you look at a 60 plus billion dollar company growing at 39 percent year on year, staggering growth. Uh, so that kind of uh, you know reflects what is the uh, leadership that they have. So one thing with with uh, uh, AWS is definitely uh, the pace of innovation at all layers of IT and OT, both uh, information technology and the uh, you know, operations technology as well, uh, is significant. That's where uh, they continue to focus on AML, 
they have the leadership on uh, you know infrastructure and applications and the today's announcements that adam made uh, on driving innovation at uh, you know based on the workloads they are creating processors uh, but some you know. example of how uh, the capabilities on this aws platform are unique uh, i think it's the maturity um, you know they being the leaders uh, it's pretty mature the second thing that they are unique is the uh, implementation of aiml at each layer of the stack uh, we don't necessarily see that the same with the other hyperscalers uh, right from infra application data you know using SageMaker on the, the complete analytics um, and the edge today they've actually uh, rolled out on 5g private network uh, that's that's really an awesome uh, new capability that I've actually they built and IoT that they have rolled out. So it's it's about the way that AWS is uh, democratizing and simplifying the most complex, uh, you know, IT and architectures uh, for the broader enterprises to adopt. I think they are much ahead. That's the, what the uniqueness of AWS. Krishna, always a pleasure speaking with you. Enjoy your time in uh, Las Vegas. We'll look to connect with you once you're back in India and all the best for this launch and um, you know, this business unit. Thank you once again. Thank you, you. The pleasure is mine. Yeah.